We've been looking at the concept of demand, both of individual demand and market demand as a whole. And we've also started to use some of the tools that economics gives us, like demand curves, to analyse it and understand it. We'll now look at the other side of the economy, at the concept of supply. Now, before we look at an economist definition, let's see what the dictionary says. Let's see, supply. Well, it says to stock, to store, to provide, to furnish, to fill or satisfy a need, to supply. We're going to take a look behind the scenes at what influences the supply of goods and services. To start with, it will help to understand what motivates firms to supply goods and services. Now, Adam Smith, one of the forefathers of modern economic theory, wrote in his book The Wealth of Nations that it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own interest. Which is a grand way of saying that people generally only do things when it's beneficial for them to do so. Now, this self-interest that Mr Smith refers to is the making of profit. And, as we'll see later, the intention is not just to make a profit, but to maximise profit. And that's what business activity is all about. The so-called bottom line. Generally speaking, people don't go into business just for fun. And they don't supply you with goods and services either, just out of the kindness of their own hearts. And because for business, it's all about the bottom line, any factor which affects their profits influences their decision to supply you with more or supply you with less.